right, so here we've got a nice lovely cubic. Uh, let's start by, let's just figure out what our possibles are and see how bad of a scenario we could have here. So uh, let's look at our constant at the end, which is 10. And let's look at our leading coefficient, which is 1. And so what are the factors of 10? We got 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. And the factors of 1 are just 1. OK, so the possible roots are plus or minus. And I could have 1 over 1, 10 over 1, 2 over 1, or 5 over 1. OK, so how many total possibilities do I have here? Uh, so I got 4 positive and 4 negative. So I got 8 possibilities. And before I start plugging in um, numbers and guessing, let's see if we can narrow this down a little bit. Uh, notice, just looking at f of x, do we see any sign changes? So notice it starts off at a positive, positive, right? So I have zero sign changes. And what does that mean for us? That means that I have zero positive real roots. Okay, so let's just think for a second. What on earth did we just find? Um, Initially, I had eight guesses, and now, just by looking at the, the plus, I narrowed it down that now I have four guesses. I don't have eight anymore. There's no sense in plugging in a positive number at all. Um, now, we could go in and, and plug in the negative, but now that I know that they are all negative roots, there's no sense in doing that. I, I, know, I know I'm just going to guess negative numbers. So let me set up our synthetic division, so x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant. And we'll collect those up, 12, 21, and 10. All right, and since I know I'm hanging out in the negatives, I'm going to start with negative 1. And let's see what we get. Uh, let's see, so drop the 1, multiply, uh, combine like terms, multiply, uh, combine like terms, multiply, and we get a zero. Yay! That wasn't that hard at all. All right, so our function so far looks like, uh, let's see, a negative 1 means it's going to have a factored form of x plus 1. And that 1, 11, and 10 means x squared plus 11x plus 10. Okay, now that looks like something that we can factor. Uh, let's see, 10, yeah, 10 and 1. So x plus 1 and x plus 10. Okay, notice we have a multiplicity. We have a repeated factor of x plus 1 squared times x plus 10. But our task was to find zeros. So where would this cross the x-axis? It would cross it at negative 1 and at negative 10. Okay. So going back to Descartes' rule of sign, that, that's sort of sped it up. We, we got, it was really nice that we found the solution and just after one try. All right, got a little nice, lovely uh, fourth degree poly polynomial. It's a quartic. It's a technical term for that. Uh, all right, so let's make a let's start with rational roots theorem. Look at our possibilities. So we'll go for the constant as eight. Now I know it's negative, but remember we got plus or minus. We got to look at. And then the leading coefficient is one. So what are the factors of eight? We got one and eight, uh, two and four, and that's it. So our possible roots would be uh, plus or minus uh, 1 over 1, 8 over 1, 2 over 1, and 4 over 1. Okay, so we got eight possibilities. Uh, let's, before we start guessing and checking, let's see if a rational roots theorem sort of, um, sorry, if uh, Descartes rule of science sort of saves anything for us. Uh, let's see, I got, I scroll down here. 
uh, we got positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative, and then it stays negative. So we have three sign changes, uh, which indicates that we have three or one positive roots. Okay, so I know that there's at least one positive root, and I could have all the way up to uh, three positive roots. Okay, so um, that said, let's see. Eh, yeah, I'm, let's try the negative one. Let's do just negative real quick. And the nice thing about the, the negative is we can sort of, we understand what taking something to a, an even power versus odd power does. So if I take uh, a negative to the fourth, I still get a positive number. If I take a negative to the third, the negative comes out. So a negative times a negative, I get plus x cubed. Uh, so this is a squared one. So a negative squared is positive, so we still get plus 2x squared. Uh, a negative times the negative 4, so I get a positive 4x and then minus 8. Uh, and then look at our sign changes. So I only have one sign change. So that tells me uh, that I have one negative root. Okay, so eh, helpful or not, at least, at least we're aware. But it, again, Either we have three positive roots and one negative root, or we do have imaginary uh, roots that could show up in this. Okay, so let's make our list x cubed, x, sorry, x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant, and our list of coefficients. So one, negative one, two, negative four, and negative eight. All right, now, at this point, it, we're, we're back to guessing. Um, there's really not any reason why I'd pick one of the positive or negative, uh, since I got the possibility of at least one of each. So let's think the lazy man's route. Uh, let's try positive one and just see what happens. So we'll drop the one, uh, multiply, combine like terms, I get zero. Uh, getting me zero there. So that's two, multiply. Uh, we get uh, negative 2. Well, not, not going to work for us, is it? We end up with negative 10. Okay, so I have tried 1, and it did not work. So let's try, uh, let's try a negative 1. Let's go with this counterpart. So I get rid of all of this. This is why we have erasers, right? All right, so drop the 1, multiply. Uh, combine like terms and then multiply and combine like terms and then multiply uh, let's see so that would be a negative 4 so we get a negative 8 when I combine like terms multiply I get 8 and 0 yay all right I got one it was a negative 1 okay so our factored form so far, and I keep track of this, uh, since negative 1 worked, the factored form would be x plus 1. And what does the 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 8 mean? Well, that's just a cubic now. So x cubed minus 2x squared uh, plus 4x minus 8. OK. Um, well, at this point, we don't have any other techniques, although that is looking pretty factor by grouping to me. But I'll let if you want to be brave enough and try that, um, go ahead and knock yourself out. Uh, but at this point, let's kind of go back up here. Uh, our Descartes rule of sign told us that we had one negative root. We found it already. So at this point, I don't have to guess any more negative numbers. Um, I know I've got to have at least one positive root, so, and I know one did not work in the initial case, so it's not going to work now, so I'm just going to go to the next number. 
Uh, let's try two and see if two works. All right, so drop that, multiply, uh, we get zero, multiply, we get four, multiply, we get, okay, look at that. We found another root. All right, so f of x equals x plus one. All right, so the fact that two worked is in factored form would be x minus two. And then that one, zero, four, that would now represent x squared plus four. Uh, okay, okay. So if you look at what we got left, we got x squared plus four left. Uh, that's actually not factorable using real numbers, but we can solve using complex numbers. So as far as factored form goes, that piece is, you know, that, that's our factored form. However, the question said find solve for x. Uh, so we're not done. I'm just emphasizing that's what the factored form is. And so I want to know that x squared plus 4, where does, where does that equal 0? So that's x squared equals negative 4, which is uh, take the square root. So you get plus or minus. So I get plus or minus 2i. Okay, so we now have our four solutions. It, one solution was at negative 1, one was at a positive 2, and then we have plus or minus 2i. All right. So good luck on homework. Um, don't give up. <laughs> Just keep trying. You'll, you'll get there.